Um, so I want to provide a, just a brief overview of some counseling issues um, because uh, that's important to have a, just a general overview, I believe, before we actually start in on some of the treatments that we do here. Um, so um, I'll try and move through this a little more quickly here. Um, so there's lots of theoretical approaches to counseling. You can think of cognitive approaches, um, inappropriate way of thinking, a failure of attention. It's a learned response. I'm afraid it will never go away. I like to control everything in my life. Unfortunately, I don't. And as Anna Metmore from uh, Copenhagen taught me, um, tinnitus is a sound. It's not good or bad. It's a sound. So it's a part of accepting that as the reality of it all. Lots of different th therapies over the years. Um, we had proposed a progressive management approach uh, to introduce different options. Um, and I'll just show the, the, uh, this progressive management approach we introduced in 89 about initial counseling handicapping, perhaps doing some measurements and then deciding what sort of options they needed. If they were a hearing aid candidate, you would work on that first. You need to change some thoughts to make sure that that's uh, they know that the, um, to get, provide some reassurance, it's not a health risk, to change some of their behavior approaches, and we'll learn more about this, including uh, managing stress behavior. We had uh, started off with some counseling and sound therapy, uh, providing information and reassurance. We recommended that family members be involved, and it was obvious that sleep was an issue, so those people were uh, counseled with sleep as well. Uh, directive counseling and tinnitus retraining therapy um, uh, was not and never intended to be collaborative, which went again every against everything I was ever taught in school as an audiologist. So um, lots of people were criticized this retraining therapy and this directive counseling that were used over the years um, as not being collaborative. And so those are, will be in your handouts. Uh, Peter Wilson and Jane Henry introduced cognitive behavior, or did introduce a fantastic uh, work on cognitive behavior therapy in two of the best books ever written, I think, on tinnitus for clinicians and therapists. And um, the cognitive behavior therapy model here is, for, is shown, we're going to hear more about this, as an event. There's a belief and a result. So you're waiting for a friend. She's late. She doesn't care about me. Or... I'm really looking forward to seeing her. I hope she gets here soon, or I hope she's okay. It's all the same event. Your belief is different, and the results that you have are quite different. So we, we want to counsel providing lots of basic information, including on attention and learning and sleep and different lifestyles. But there's more that we can do in the counseling, including um, coping strategies and reassurance, the use of diaries, and you'll hear more about those today and tomorrow. For a lot of patients, a simply, simple reassurance is really helpful. There's a book that I edited a few years ago up here that's on display that uh, highlights many of the different clinical treatments. The last thing I want to say is about nurturing expectations. So I did, a, in preparation for a placebo group uh, years ago, I did a study. I went, and went out and looked at all the placebo literature. There were textbooks and studies done on placebo effects. And I went around talking about using the placebo effect, not just for tinnitus, but also for fitting hearing aids and interact with patients. The audience didn't like me talking about the placebo effect, so I changed the name to Nurturing Patient Expectations <laughs> and wrote a couple articles on that. So uh, positive consultations are a lot better than negative consultations. Uh, their expectations influence uh, the ultimate outlook in lots of counseling op opportunities. So I, I summarized my, the, the literature from my perspective, and these were the important ingredients, um, and I'll just go through these this way. Being perceived as a knowledgeable professional, demonstrate that you understand tinnitus. Sometimes I'll say to a patient, do you have trouble sleeping? A lot of patients have trouble sleeping because of their tinnitus. And some of the patients will say, wow, you're the first person I've talked to that really understands my tinnitus. Because they've gone from one professional to another, from one professional to another. And finally, they found somebody who knows something about tinnitus. 
have a very clear therapy plan in place, be sympathetic, show you that you really care to the patient, and um, hope that the tinnitus effects can be reduced, talking about some research aspects of this. Um, a great book on counseling by Flasher and Fogel. Flasher was, uh, Fogel was a speech pathologist here at Iowa many years ago. Some of the important characteristics about being able to listen, for example, um, being positive about things and being stable yourself. So expectations influence treatment. Uh, be positive, have a plan, nurturing the expectation, but always be positive and sincere. Any other comments or questions about that? You're going to hear a lot more about the uh, counseling aspects, and you're going to hear a lot more about the sound therapy tomorrow as well. <laughs>